Here, in the richest city, in the richest country in the world, they made the hospitals run. Every day their work made it possible for New York's hospitals to treat, to care, and to heal. Cooks, orderlies, cleaning staff, frontline caregivers, on different floors, in different divisions, in different parts of the city, united by two things, powerlessness and poverty. My name is Marilyn Myers. I'm a ward helper and I make $32 a week for 44 hours. My name is Keith Pilgrim. I make $32 and work 44 hours. My name is Arnold Pilgrim. I make uh, 30, $34 and work 44 hours a week. 50 years ago, a small union of 5,000 drugstore workers did something almost unthinkable. Against the odds, they set out to win decent wages and benefits for these exploited and underpaid hospital workers and organized them under their banner, Local 1199. In 1958, the fight started at Montefiore Hospital in the Bronx. Then, in May 1959, came a 46-day strike against seven of New York City's voluntary hospitals, the largest hospital strike in the nation's history. President Leon Davis and the 1199 leadership knew that this fight was about more than mobilizing workers. It was about mobilizing the public behind their cause, and they did. I think the hospital workers have given New York an inspiration. They have recalled that America is the home of the people who fight for the man lowest down. The strike ended and the workers won. They won the promise of better wages and benefits for the first time. And they won something else. They won respect. We are so grateful for that day. Until now, we still remember what it was like. And our union is one of the blessed, blessed events that happened to many of us. In 1962, the union won another major victory, getting Governor Nelson Rockefeller to sign a new collective bargaining law that for the first time covered hospitals. 1199 was now on its way to being recognized as New York's Health and Hospital Workers Union. Over the next three decades, the union grew to be more than 75,000 members, but it grew in ways beyond numbers. 1199 played a major role in the civil rights movement, fighting segregation in the Deep South, helping organize the famous March on Washington, standing in solidarity with striking hospital workers in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, we're not fighting for the hospital workers. We're fighting for all poor people. And when the hospital workers make a little more money, pretty soon everybody makes a little more money. And just as 1199 members were drawn to civil rights struggles across America. Civil rights leaders were drawn to 1199's struggle for economic and social justice here in New York. I am fully confident that you will be successful in eliminating poverty wages and winning decent standards in local 1199 contracts. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, 1199 continued to grow and expand, even as the national mood changed and organized labor found itself constantly on the defensive. After some turbulent times during the Reagan era, in 1989, the union's rank and file elected a new energetic president who would take 1199 to new heights. The first urgent task for President Dennis Rivera was negotiating a new fair contract the League of Voluntary Hospitals. It wouldn't be easy. While the union mobilized 1199's membership, activated alliances with the city's other unions, and built support from elected officials, the talks dragged on with no settlement in sight. Finally, in July, came the first major breakthrough. I am very happy to report to you today that we have reach an agreement, a contract, a full final contract with the four Catholic hospitals and with San Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx. Every 1199 member does a job that is critical to health care. 
and so you should be paid accordingly. While the rest of the voluntary hospitals continued to hold out through the summer, 1199 continued to step up the pressure. Cardinal O'Connor has done the right thing. He has done the moral thing. He has done the humane thing. If Cardinal O'Connor and the Catholic hospitals, if the poorest hospitals can do it, surely the best all and the wealthiest can do it. Finally, at the 11th hour, a settlement was reached, a groundbreaking contract that would guarantee 1199ers three straight years of big wage gains and better employee benefits. If, if one can, can appreciate the heightened uh, anxiety and excitement uh, built up in 1199 members that culminated in success for them as they settled that contract and then transferred all of that to me. And I was a beneficiary of that good hard work. Uh, I, I wonder if, uh, if they hadn't succeeded with the contract, whether or not I would have succeeded. Who knows? 1199 central role in Mayor David Dinkins' election marked the beginning of a new era of political activism for the Union. In the early days, 1199 had to go to elected officials to seek their support for Union causes. More and more, in the 1990s, it was candidates and elected officials coming to 1199 for its help. Mayors, senators, even presidential candidates. And in 2004, with so much at stake for working families across the country, 1199 stepped up in a way that no local union in the nation ever had before, training hundreds of heroes and sending them to critical swing states to fight to beat George W. Bush and change America's course. Throughout the 90s, 1199 continued its long history of deep involvement in battles for social justice, from standing up to police misconduct to blocking mean-spirited proposals in Washington to criminalize immigrants, the first union to call for an end to the war in Vietnam in the 1960s became one of the strongest organizing voices against the war in Iraq. 1199 also embarked on a new mission here in New York to organize the tens of thousands of exploited workers who take care of the elderly and disabled while themselves living in poverty. Through the media, 1199 made New York's home health aides, housekeepers, and home attendants invisible no more. And one by one, they won contracts to guarantee better wages and real benefits for the first time. When a union came in, that meant you have a voice. And once we had a signed contract, everything, everything changed. From 1989 on, the union forged an alliance with the Greater New York Hospital Association to defend, protect, and expand health care in New York State. Under governors, both Democratic and Republican, the newly formed Health Care Education Project fiercely opposed cuts to hospitals and nursing homes in the state budget, mobilizing workers through marches and rallies, and mobilizing the public through unprecedented media campaigns to educate and activate all New Yorkers. 1199's stepped-up presence in Albany reflected the Union's growing presence across the state. What began 75 years ago as a union of pharmacists in the five boroughs of New York City was now a statewide union with members stretching from Buffalo to the tip of Long Island. In 1998, 1199 voted to join SEIU, becoming the largest local and the fastest growing national union in the country. And in 2005, the union was renamed 1199 SEIU United Healthcare Workers East, reflecting 1199's expansion into the states of Maryland, Massachusetts, and the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Now, 
in 2007, 1199 stands stronger than ever with a newly elected leadership team that's ready to take the union to even greater heights. Well, we're Mr. Big 1199. And what we do every day is to take care of the working people, the people of this city who need health care. We're not special interests. We have special interests. Special interests in what we do and who we take care of. Together, 1199 continues in the fighting spirit that has always defined it, building strength from its incredible diversity, building power from the active participation of 275,000 members, winning contracts that set the standard for healthcare workers in hospitals and nursing homes, for home care workers everywhere, and fighting on the front lines of every important battle for social and economic justice. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once called 1199 the authentic conscience of the labor movement. From 1932 until today, that's been the union's historic role through its first 75 years. That will always be 1199's mission. When you look back at 1199, we have such a long, proud history. We celebrate our victories, but then we get right back to work because there's always another struggle. We've come a long, long way as a union, but together, we're going to take 1199 a lot farther still.